this election. In return, I will always respect that and I will continue to adopt a place-first rather than party-first approach, which is the foundation of Greater Manchester's success. This is the new politics we are pioneering. And this result is an endorsement, an emphatic endorsement of the change we are bringing. I will take it as an instruction to complete the building of a public transport system that befits a city region of our stature. And I will do it within this new mayoral term, uniting bike, bus, tram and train in a single integrated system. It has been hard to keep Greater Manchester moving forward when the country has been going backwards. But we have managed it and our economy is growing faster than the UK's. Yet we still need change. And that is why it is so good to see the country voting for it at these elections. Britain desperately needs a new government and a fresh start. And from here, we will work hard to bring that change about. Speaking to people in Greater Manchester over the last few weeks, though, I have also heard a call for more profound change from parents in Harper Hay, trapped in debt because of the pernicious combination of the housing and the benefit systems, from communities suffering the after effects of youth violence and struggling to make sense of it. The Westminster one-size-fits-all approach to policy hasn't worked for them. And the truth is this, if you have an education system overly focused on the university route, you will leave some young people growing up without hope. If you have a benefit system overly focused on sanctions rather than support, you will end up with a growing mental health crisis. And if housing policy is exclusively focused on promoting home ownership, you will leave millions trapped in a housing crisis. Greater Manchester is ready to break out of this. Devolution in England is working and these elections show voters are buying into it and it is time now to go much further. My new mission will be to give everyone growing up here an equal alternative to the university route so all our young people have a path in life and hope in their heart. And my new plea to Westminster is to give us the powers to free ourselves from the grip of the housing crisis and let us build a benefit system that helps people move forward rather than holds them back. After these elections and all the dust has settled, what will stay with me are the words from one of those parents in the neighbourhood centre in Harper Hay, Joe, who spoke at a debt, uh, justice, ju a debt justice event that Dan uh, was at uh, too. She made the best speech that I heard in this election campaign. We look to politicians, she said, to make difficult decisions which will ultimately benefit the whole of our country, both now and in the future. We need you to speak as our voice and never give up challenging the inadequate benefit system and the punitive sanctions from the DWP, fighting for better wages and fairer living costs. This is your debt to us. This is the price of your power. Those were Joe's words, and I recognise and accept that price, Joe. As I said to you, I'm going to put your words on my office wall, and perhaps everyone who has stood in these elections around the country should do the same. We all need to reconnect power with the promotion of the common good, rather than what we have seen in recent times, the association of power with corruption and lies. And with that nod to the great new order, I will close uh, by just uh, saying this. I am ready to fight harder than I have ever fought for anything before for a greater Manchester where people can live free from the fear of debt, hunger and eviction and where everyone is set up to be a part of the growing success story that is our city region today. Greater Manchester will continue to lead the way and we will do it together. Thank you so much for your support. I look forward to getting on with the job again immediately and I won't let you down. Thank you very much, everybody.